I wrap Stan and here we are with your morning flash update. And this update is for the morning of Thursday. And we're at the 20th of April, 2023, about 8.20 a.m. Central Time. Well, it's been a down morning. And we have seen the market bounce off the lows, but it's been an ugly morning. We saw a number of mid-tier banks come out and almost to the bank. They're losing interest income. Uh, they're projecting still a loss of that. The amount of deposits don't so far look all that scary in terms of loss. There's some, but the banks probably can get that back if they raise interest rates, but that'll hurt net income. So that becomes the argument that the uh, market is fighting. Obviously, Tesla's still there talking about uh, more problems for the market and they want to keep, continue to price cuts in. I wouldn't buy a Tesla. You buy a Tesla, you get a $3,000 cut. If they give me the money back within a certain period of time of the cut, yeah. But you buy it, the game they're creating is don't buy now, buy it right after the recent cut so you don't get hurt further. But what's that do for your resale value down the road? I can't imagine. Energy's getting smashed right now. And that's because the, the market is taking the attitude the Fed is going it's like a 92% probability now, if you look at the Fed watch page, with a 25 basis point hike in June, I mean May. Nobody knows what June's going to be. It's way too soon to have any idea if there'll be another hike or not. Don't, don't get caught into that game. My problem in wanting to own grains at this time of the year is the farmers are planting. That generally means more supply in the mind, and you do a certain amount of hedging. You're seeing that. The dollar, I still think, will end up lower. I think you're looking at the very beginning of a long-term dollar downtrend. I think that'll benefit the gold and the silver over time. The copper market sort of waning here is wondering, gee, that China growth was good, but it's way shy of pre-pandemic numbers. What is that going to mean? Is there going to be a lot of demand? And if the economies of the world are really getting to the point where we sit there and we talk about interest rate, uh, hikes causing recessions of one form or the other, how bullish is that? That's the battle it's fighting. That's the headwind. We then take a look this morning at the news. Now, we had the Philly Fed Business Activity Index, and it got worse. Just look at your headline number. It's easily 50% worse than what was expected. The prices paid nowhere near as good as they were last time. They're up, but not like they were. The employment index slipping a little bit. The prior was worse, but not very much. So that's an improvement number, actually. Uh, orders index, as you can see, not as bad as it had been. So you can go through that. Jobless claims up 5,000. And continuing claims are the highest they've been since November of 2021. So people aren't finding those jobs as easy as they were. Now, where's the loss in jobs? Tech. Where's it being added? Service industry. So we'll see how the balance is. But I don't think service industry can offset the big amounts of tech, and there's more coming in the tech field. Home sales, we're going to get the existing home sales coming out uh, this morning. Look for those. And they're looking for that uh, to come in at an annualized rate just slightly less than last time. The conference board will come out with their leading lagging indicators. That is going to be an important uh, report as I see it. We then get energy analysts talking about the EIA natural gas. And by the way, Pakistan started buying from Russia. Their first crude at a discount will arrive, I think May 1st is the date. So Russia's opening another market with them. Six Fed members, six today, will be speaking. Everybody's got something to say before they go into the quiet period, which starts, I believe, sometime next week. And that puts them into the quiet zone as we get ready for the following week the FOMC meeting, what they're going to say and do. So they go into their quiet zone. Now, if you're really studying these markets and you're doing what I do, you're seeing where they're stalling, where they're falling to, and where they're holding. It's certainly the Bollinger Bands. You've got to look, to look at those, see what they mean, understand momentum with them. In other words, what's the slow stochastic doing? I created a, I think it's 15 video series for you to look at, to learn to do this. I use it, be it in the ETFs, the stock market, the futures market, a chart's a chart at the end of the day. This is simple, you'll learn it over a weekend. And then I keep you informed with the morning subscriber videos as part of this, the charting software to do it. And all of a sudden you go, whoa, I got a new tool. How do you do this? Take a look right here. 
give a click at any point at the top of our screen. Uh, that'll take you right to the home page where we talk all about this as well. I'm my wrap scene. I'll see you at the end of the day with your market wrap ups. Have a good day trading. Trade well.